Hey everyone, Raif Durazi here, and this is your latest HIV news video. Today I'll be covering 10 articles covering topics ranging from chemotherapy, reducing HIV infected cells toward a functional cure, injectable PrEP lenacapavir found to be safe with hormone therapy, bone strengthening supplements for adolescents with HIV, and HIV stigma in gay dating, and more. Diving right in. Number one, LGBTQ nation. Donald Trump stops giving PrEP to gay men and sex workers, ensuring HIV outbreaks abroad. The Trump administration has restricted PEPFAR, so PrEP can only be given to pregnant and breastfeeding women, cutting off gay men, sex workers, and other high-risk groups during a 90-day foreign aid freeze. A State Department memo says those groups cannot be offered PEPFAR-funded PrEP despite experts warning the policy could fuel preventable HIV outbreaks. PEPFAR supports HIV programs for over 25 million people in 54 countries, and KFF, or the Kaiser Family Foundation, reports clinics are already shutting down as funds stall. LGBTQ plus advocate Wayne Besson called the move a puritanical distribution of life-saving medication that could lead to mass infections and deaths. Number two, Penn Live. Iconic actor makes mind-boggling HIV claim. It's a threat, I suppose. Actor Charlie Sheen says his HIV is completely manageable, but he sparked controversy on the Howie Mandel Does Stuff podcast by claiming an experimental drug that worked better than existing treatment was never allowed to reach the market. Sheen pointed to PRO-140, a monoclonal antibody once studied for HIV, saying it had, quote, quicker and more stable results with no side effects, end quote and suggested it was sidelined because, quote, it's a threat, I suppose. It works better than what they have, end quote. Sheen, who publicly disclosed his HIV status in 2015, after being diagnosed four years earlier, also reflected on how addiction and past sexual encounters shaped his life, adding that since his diagnosis, he's been careful and insists, I never passed it on. Um, so PRO 140 is known as Lamab. And it's also being studied for its effects on COVID as well as cancer and NASH liver disease. So to clear up what Charlie Sheen carelessly opined on, um, the company behind Lamab is Cytodyne. They've had clinical trials for not only its effects on HIV, but on other things like COVID-19, like I mentioned. And um, they are actively working on getting it FDA approved and um, getting more data on it through clinical trials. So... I don't know, I just think this is a little irresponsible, well, a lot irresponsible on Charlie Sheen's part as a public figure and as someone who's looked to um, with inside, inside knowledge on HIV to say that, it, that there is some dubious reasons behind it is, I think, a little careless without um, having or providing enough evidence to substantiate those claims. And this just adds to, you know, all the conspiracy theories that are going on out there. I did some digging into this. I'm not going to go too much into it on this video, but I am going to do a separate video just looking at PRO 140 or Laurent Lomab and Cytodyne and what they're doing and, um, and, and compare that to Charlie Sheen's statements. Number three, gay times. The harsh truth about HIV phobia in gay dating. HIV stigma is still deeply entrenched in gay dating, as many of you know, making life emotionally challenging for many living with the virus. 19-year-old Cody Nestor says nearly 95% of people he dates online react negatively when he discloses his HIV-positive status, even though his undetectable viral load means he cannot transmit the virus. Experts note that fear persists despite modern treatments, with 65% of HIV-positive Americans virally suppressed and PrEP reducing HIV risk by 99% when taken properly. UCSF's Kim Coaster points out, quote, the phobia is pervasive. PrEP was supposed to be liberating. It is part of the answer, but it's not enough, end quote. Historical misconceptions and lack of education, especially among Gen Z, keep stigma alive, affecting intimacy, mental health, and safe sex practices. While acceptance is low, stories like Damien Jack, who married after a partner accepted his status, show hope that awareness and conversations can gradually break down HIV phobia. Number four, Portland Press Herald pushback on syringe services hurts Maine's HIV fight, experts say. In Lewiston, Maine, local debate over needle exchange programs is heating up as some officials, like Councillor Aaron Sol Leclerc, push to limit syringe distribution due to concerns about litter in public spaces. Health experts, however, warn that restricting access could worsen HIV and hepatitis C outbreaks. 
Maine syringe programs certified by the state CDC have been shown to cut HIV and hepatitis C transmission by about 50%. And combining them with substance use treatments can reduce hepatitis C risk by 74%. Spurwink, Lewiston's only remaining exchange, saw client visits jump from 30 to nearly 200 in November. Infectious disease researcher Kina Thakarar explained, I think the data thus far have shown... Infectious disease researcher Kina Thakarar explained, quote, I think the data thus far have shown that syringe service programs, if anything, really help our communities, end quote. The tension highlights the challenge of balancing public safety concerns with proven public health strategies in the state's ongoing HIV fight. I routinely see pushback on um, harm reduction services such as needle exchange as being something that encourages drug use and exacerbates the problem. None of the data that I've seen reported on supports that argument. Um, and I think it's almost funny that almost comical that this person is complaining about litter in public spaces as a reason to stop providing these services, which are um, like a public health concern. Yes. I think that it's a problem if you're seeing needles strewn about, about town and that's something that needs to be addressed, but I don't think, halting the program altogether is the right answer. Number five, LGBTQ nation, an HIV expert at the CDC was asked to scrub data on trans people. He quit instead. John Weiser, a 14 year veteran of the CDC who ran the medical monitoring project or MMP, the nation's main source of HIV data, resigned after being pressured to erase data on transgender people. Under the Trump administration's quote, defending women from gender ideology, unquote, executive order, CDC staff were ordered to remove trans participants from research reports, including a study Weiser had prepared on opioid use among transgender people with HIV. He refused, saying, quote, I thought about my transgender patients and how I would face them. Erasing people from the story harms actual people, end quote, and withdrew the paper. The MMP was defunded, and Weiser ultimately left the agency, criticizing colleagues who complied with directives to suppress data. Experts warn such actions not only corrupt science, but also harm marginalized communities, undermining public health efforts. You know, I think this is such a double-edged sword, and I have empathy for, you know, wanting to stand your ground and say if, you, if the agency, organization, government is not you know, supporting what is right, then I'm going to extricate myself from that. But I also hear the other side of the argument that people make, which is I would rather stay here and deal with these um, oppressive orders and do something as grievous as cutting out trans populations rather than have no funding and no research done at all. It's like, it's this like moral quandary that people, that scientists, researchers really have to face. And it's it's not just this like thought experiment anymore. Like people have to sit down. Like I remember he hearing at one of the HIV conferences last year, this woman speaking and she was saying that she got a lot of flack for um, continuing her research, uh, even though she was limited in a lot of ways that, you know, um, abolished DEI in research. But she said, look, I'm doing research on adolescents, on, on children and potentially life-saving treatment um, for HIV. So if she, if she were to like fight that, then there would be zero research and zero funding for her. And the people that were already, the kids, the adolescents that were already in her study would be out of the study. There would be no study. And then all the research would be halted altogether. So it's like, it's not a cut and dry black and white thing. And I'm not saying that that one or the other is necessarily right. I'm just saying that it's such an incredibly difficult situation. And I like to, at least in my, you know, imagining, uh, believe that put in a situation where I was involved in a corrupt organization, knowing that I, as an insider, have access to knowledge and information that other people don't and, and subtle influence that other people don't, maybe it would be more valuable to, for me to stay there and kind of give the appearance of or seem like I am complying, but also, you know, in the background, taking notes, um, gathering information in a way that can be used in the future or given to outside sources so that they can use that information for um, 
for good. You know, it's kind of like when I think about Nazi Germany, how there were insiders who, you know, on the outside looked like Nazis, acted like Nazis, and appeared to support the Nazi movement, but were really insiders helping um, those fighting the Nazi regime. You know, if everybody who was in opposition of the Nazi regime just kind of like left Germany and didn't do anything, there would be there would be no intel. It would be a black hole. It would be a vacuum, kind of like North Korea is. So, you know, at what point do we say we need people on the inside? Anyway, just a thought. Sorry about the rant. Number six, GPB. HIV prevention increases with privacy of telemedicine, leading to more filled prep prescriptions. A new study from Emory University's Rollins School of Public Health shows that telemedicine is dramatically expanding access to HIV prevention through PrEP. In the U.S., nearly 20% of PrEP users, over 110,000 of about 580,000 in 2024, received their medication via telehealth, up from less than 1% in 2020. Telemedicine removes barriers like stigma and discomfort at clinics, making it easier for users, often young and healthy, to access prevention care. Aaron Siegler, an Emory epidemiologist, explained, quote, the teleprep model allows some users to be met closer to where they're most comfortable, end quote, highlighting how privacy and convenience are driving more people to protect themselves against HIV. And it's interesting to see that this stat is comparing uh, less than 1% in 2020 because, as we know, COVID and the lockdowns happened, which changed the nature of how we perform healthcare in so many ways and really gave a boost to telehealth. And we're seeing that in stats like this. Number seven, medical watch. Chemotherapy offers clues for potential HIV cure. Researchers at Johns Hopkins are exploring how chemotherapy could offer clues toward an HIV cure. While current HIV medications keep the virus undetectable and non-transmissible, they aren't curative because HIV DNA integrates into immune cells, which then proliferate like cancer cells. In a study, a patient receiving paclitaxel and carboplatin, probably, probably mispronouncing those, for metastatic lung cancer saw a dramatic but temporary reduction in HIV-infected cells. Joel Blankson, MD, PhD, explained, quote, We were hoping we would cure the patient, but once he went off chemo, we saw this rebound, end quote. Excitingly, the team replicated similar results in the lab using MMF, a transplant drug that's easier to tolerate, suggesting a potential path toward a functional HIV cure. Number eight, Medical Express. Chewable supplements help improve bone density of adolescents with HIV, clinical trial finds. A new clinical trial shows that high-dose vitamin D and calcium supplements can significantly improve bone density in adolescents living with HIV, potentially reducing fracture risk. The study involved 842 adolescents aged 11 to 19 in Harare, Zimbabwe, and Lusaka, Zambia, all on antiretroviral therapy. Those with insufficient vitamin D saw a 41% greater increase in spinal bone density over one year compared to those not taking the supplements, with an estimated 10% reduction in fracture risk. The chewable supplements, 20,000 IU of vitamin D weekly plus 500 milligrams of calcium daily, were chosen as a safe, affordable intervention. Professor Rashida Ferrand of LSHTM highlighted, quote, this is the first trial in Africa that provides evidence for a cheap, safe, and feasible intervention to minimize HIV's effects during adolescence, a period of rapid growth, which we anticipate will translate into benefits across the life course, end quote. Number nine, Oxford Academic. Groundbreaking HIV prevention med won't harm trans people's hormone therapy. A new study shows that lenacapavir, a twice-yearly injectable PrEP marketed as yes 2 go by Gilead Sciences does not interfere with hormone therapy for trans men and women, removing a major barrier to HIV prevention in this community. Researchers monitored hormone levels in 253 trans participants from a phase 3 trial of over 2,000 people and found that testosterone and estradiol remained stable before and after injections. Jill Blumenthal, MD from UC San Diego, highlighted these data support the concurrent use of twice yearly lenacapavir prep and feminizing or masculinizing gender affirming hormone therapy without dose adjustment in gender diverse individuals, addressing a key barrier to prep uptake and adherence. 
with trans people representing about 1% of the U.S. population, but 2% of new HIV cases in 2019, and PrEP use among gender-diverse individuals as low as 20%, this long-lasting affordable option, under $60 a year, could significantly improve HIV prevention. Number 10, Benzinga. Gilead's experimental combo tablet for HIV treatments hits primary goal. Gilead Sciences announced that its experimental single-tablet HIV treatment combining Bictegravir and Lenacapavir met the primary goal in the Phase 3 Artistry 2 trial, showing it is statistically non-inferior to Bictarvi for adults already vi virologically suppressed. The trial measured participants' HIV-1 RNA levels at week 48, and BicLen was well-tolerated with no new safety concerns. This combo pairs Bictegravir, a guideline recommended integrase inhibitor with a high resistance barrier, and lenacapavir, a capsid inhibitor with no overlapping resistance, offering a once-daily, single-pill option that could simplify treatment. Quote, a single tablet regimen combining Bictegravir and lenacapavir would potentially further transform the treatment landscape, expanding options to enable people with HIV to sustain virologic suppression, end quote. The company said, Gilead plans to file these results with regulators and present the full data at a future scientific congress. Those are your articles for this week. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. And please share this with anyone who might find value in this content. Those are the best ways that you can help support me and my channel. Until next time, cheers.